Hi, I'm Diane Weiser, Senior Level Management here at Hawks. We are the East. These people always think that an artist, a writer, will always put themselves into... Like Woody um, Allen. Yeah. But actually, it's kind of you kind of reminiscing about your experiences. It's almost a very kind of reminiscent piece mm -hmm. of filmmaking. Kind of, could you talk a little bit about that? Well, I feel like we were sort of uh, braiding something, you know? Mm -hmm. And so one thread was our experiences. Mm -hmm. Britt and I lived in the summer of 2009 on the road, and we took a lot of the experiences of the different wonderful communities we lived in and that's one thread. And then another thread is a more traditional espionage thriller. And then another thread is the idea of private intelligence versus the FBI or a government-sanctioned intelligence outfit like MI6. A, a, a private intelligence group which is sort of multinational and not based on any ethical foundation, that th that's another thread. Thread. Yeah. Right. And obviously another thread would be, say, Sarah's journey, mm. because she doesn't start off as a kind of sympathetic protagonist. She's more antagonist, and the journey goes from antagonist to kind of protagonist. How conscious were you of kind of that position you were putting the audience into to kind of challenge them in how they kind of perceive this character? It's an interesting thing to say that she goes from an antagonist to protagonist. I've never seen it that way or thought of it that way, but I think you, you make a great point, and I could totally see that. Um, yeah, I, I think it was very important for us that the audience put themselves in Sarah's shoes. That's my favorite cinematic moment is when I'm with a character, uh, you know, whether it's uh, The Godfather or, or, or Black Swan, you know, you, or, or, or Eddie Furlong's character in Terminator 2. You really feel in their shoes, and so then everything that happens, whether it's the straitjacket scene in the East or... or uh, the ending, you're with that character. And to continue on that kind of thread, I would describe kind of Sarah as the kind of guide through the story, but Doc, for me, was that kind of emotional heart. I don't know if that's strange to say because it's got so many wonderful performances, but Doc, for me, seems to be the emotional heart. Uh, what are your feelings towards that? Well, I mean, I think that Toby Kebbell's a fantastic actor, and I think that Doc is a great role, and I think both Toby Kebbell and Julia Ormond, both Doc and Paige Williams, Julia Ormond's character, are this sort of sticky, emotional center of the movie. I think the pharmaceutical jam is one of the most emotionally compelling, especially when you consider that it's based on 100% fact. Yeah. It's easy when it's not your life, easy when it's not your home, but when it's your fault, it shouldn't be so easy to sleep at night, especially when we know where you live. And what interests me about Patricia Clarkson's character as well, talking quite a bit about characters here, is she is a, re she is a real villain of the piece, even though she never meets the East, even though they never really come face mm. to face, because she kind of is a catalyst for the suffering of all these communities, of all these people. But at the same time, she kind of enables it to continue. So in a way, she's a step above those who are guilty. Yeah, I think that what you just said is really fascinating. The idea that she, that Patricia Clarkson's Sharon never m meets the East, and I think that's exactly what the movie is about, which is about the idea of accountability. It's so easy for a, a fat cat to say, you know, like Sharon, to say they're not my client because she's not actually interacting with these people. There is her woman on the on the ground is Sarah, and Sarah ha and we, the audience, have to encounter all the emotional consequences of the actions. But the CEO or the president of the company is, you know, in a really comfortable living room or office and doesn't have to actually deal with the, the pain. And I think that's why the film opens with an oil spill at the CEO of an oil company's yeah. summer estate, because it's like, you know, do you understand the emotional impact of an oil spill, sir? Do you get it? <laughs> yeah. But also, um, one of the things kind of for me, the film, what the film's great for is Sarah doesn't kind of side with one or the other. She because both are two there both are two different extremes and she's almost trying to find that middle ground just as we are. Because as an audience member, I don't agree with perhaps an eye for an eye because he can't lead anywhere 
you know, it's kind Other of than blindness. Place. Exactly. Yeah. But also I don't kind of agree with trying to kind of cover up kind of crimes and allow people to kind of do awful things and actually never be held accountable just because of the amount of money in their kind of bank account. So that's what I love about the Sarah character. Like, but it does seem to be a journey about trying to find the middle ground the entire film does. Well, I mean, I think trying to just find the righteous path to like yeah. trying to carve right from wrong, it's really hard to do these days. We will counterattack three corporations in the next six months for their worldwide terrorism. And this is just the beginning. 